This is Canary Wharf, one of the largest financial districts in the world. Twelve young contestants will fight to secure a place in this prestigious estate. They are only between 14 and 18, but yet will demonstrate their talent, their professionalism, their spirit and their eagerness to win the contest. Over the next 10 weeks, Mr. Howard Dorber, Chief Judge of 3G Boss, who is also a strategic advisor to the Canary Wharf Group, will assess each contestant and choose one to work with him at this prestigious estate. Before all this can happen, 3G Boss team selected 30 individuals from numerous applicants to be qualified for the interviews. Welcome to level 39 at One Canada Square, Canary Wharf. My name is Howard Dauber and I'm the Chief Judge of 3G Boss. My day job is that I'm the Strategic Director here at Canary Wharf Group. Uh, my two judges colleagues uh, with me today uh, are Kohenor uh, Kabir, who is one of London's leading headhunters working in the financial services sector, uh, and Dr. Sanwar Chowdhury, who's a leading entrepreneur and businessman, and they're going to be assisting me throughout this process. Today, first of all, I should say you're all winners. Um, you took the opportunity to apply for this competition. You put your names forward when you could have uh, sat at home and done something else. Uh, you could have gone and played football, you could have gone and watched TV, but you decided to put your name forward. So that's uh, the first thing you've got right. Howard and the judges are just briefing the contestants now about the day they've got ahead of them. They're talking about what kind of questions are going to be asked and what they're expecting from the contestants. Let's see how they do. Today will be a job interview uh, task. So we'll be, each of us, interviewing you for four minutes. It's not very long. You don't have long in a job interview to make a first impression. You will have an opportunity to talk about yourself. Uh, we've got some uh, questions to ask. Um, but really, my advice would be try and get across as much uh, of what you want to say about yourself in that four minutes uh, as you possibly can. Um, we're not just looking for what your answers are, the content of what you say, but how you say it and how you come across as a person. So, we look forward very much to meeting you all individually. Uh, and uh, even if you aren't selected at the end of today, uh, you should feel very good about how far you've got uh, in this competition and uh, may the best men and women win. Thank you. The contestants were just being briefed by Howard and the two judges. Now they've got a big day of interviews ahead of them. They're going to be going through some rigorous questions and interrogation, but it will be a tough day that's wished them well. Now, the interview time. The contestants are ready to answer, but can they satisfy the judges? Good afternoon, welcome. So, Labiba, you're 16. Yep. Tell me what your greatest achievement has been my in your great, life so far. My greatest achievement has been probably when I've done the Duke of Edinburgh Award and okay. I had to lead the group. Let's say um, I gave you a million pounds. Yeah. What would you do with it? I would give half of it to charity. They're the ones that need it the most. And the rest of it, I would probably share it around with my family. Right. Using three words, how would your parents describe you? Uh, loud, enthusiastic, and fun. Okay, no leadership qualities? Oh yeah, but I mean like the way they would say it. So talk to me about what your dream job is. My dream job would probably be, be to open up a business. What, what business would you start up? A corner shop or something like that and then from there I would gradually go bigger. And selling what in the corner shop? Normal stuff in a corner shop as in like... Like food and veg and grocery yeah. and stuff? Is that your dream to run a corner shop? No. <laughs> What's your dream then? They have gold and silver and bronze. I've done the bronze one oh, right. and okay. hopefully I should be doing the gold one. Why would you want to put a giraffe in your fridge? I don't know the 
that was the question. <laughs> well, um, thank you for your time. Rod, nice to meet you. First of all, let's say I gave you a million pounds right, right now mm -hmm. in cash. What would you do with it? Um, my first priority would be to make more money from it. I will be the Director of Finance and the Human Resources Coordinator. Mm -hmm. I was also on the, as the head of the school council uh, mm -hmm. a year and a couple of years back. You're looking to win 3G Boss. Yeah. If I asked you a question like, what is 79 multiplied by 80, what would your answer be? 6400. Okay, so do you think 500 and so is... No, I'm sorry, I meant answer? to say 6400, not 640. Right. Now I've got to ask some difficult questions. Let's start with a, with a nice easy one. Um, if I gave you a truck full of Lego, yeah, uh, an articulated truck full of Lego, you know, the, the toy, uh, what would you do with it? I'd go to um, toy retailers and I'd uh, ad advertise for the Legos and hopefully they'd buy it and I'd sell it to children. So you'd sell it on to, you'd sell it to people? Yeah, to sell to it toy on. retailers, so you wouldn't try and sell it yourself? No. If you had a machine that produced 50 pound notes every day for the rest of your life, how much would you pay for it? Practical machine though, because the more notes you print, the less the value of the money goes down. So like if I have a million 50 pound notes, like the 50 pound wouldn't be as valuable as, it's like the same thing that happened in Germany, you know, like the government printed um, a lot of, you know, euros and everything and the value of the money completely plummeted and they were in kind of like an economic, um, Problem. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about what is your dream job? My dream job uh, would be to go into international relations, okay. preferably work for the UN or mm -hmm. FAO, seeing as they're really big international corporations. When I'm older, I would like to invent things. And with that, I would like to share it with the world. By that, I would like to start my own business. And I think my starting point is here at CG. Okay, and when you say you want... Um, well, my dream job is to become a surgeon. My main focus is on the midsection so that, um, you know, like heart and kidneys, all of that stuff. What does family mean to you? I believe that family is a thing that strives people forward. People do things for the family. They become much more important because you've lived with them for such a long time and now you've learned to love them and now you have to stay with them for life and you will do anything to protect them. I mean, you would do the same, wouldn't you? There were a lot of surprise questions that I was not expect, expecting during the interviews. Interviewers like to put in to see how you think. Okay. So a little bit different. So if I gave you one million pounds yeah. right now, yeah. what would you do with it? One million pounds? That's million a lot pounds. of money. The first thing I think that what I would do with the money is invest it for future purposes. The second thing I would do is probably give some to my family so that we can get more of a living standard, like get a bigger house. Make more money because I'll be selling it as a business and I'll let it expand and therefore I'll make more money. And with that money, use some for me and my family and also give some to charities and help the poor. What would you do right now? Right now, probably property, as I would want some kind of passive income. There is a rubber band. Yes. I want you to sell it to me. Good morning, gentlemen. I see that you need a rubber band. What, what do I need that for? So can you write your name? No. Why not? I mean, look at your office, it looks like a mess. You need to keep it as a tidy. I mean, that pen, that could go anywhere. You need to keep it on hand. Okay, how much do you want for it? Since it's just a pen, I'll charge you 20p. I would sell it for £75, but however... £75? Yes. Is this like the only one in the world? Yes. Not really, because they sell them in packs. So, yeah. if uh, the pack, I think they cost about two to three pounds. One pound. Just one pound for the pen. I would norm normally I would give him uh, quite a bit more, right? But you're in need. No, I'm not going to buy it for 75 quid. I might give you one, one p for it. What? One p? No, not happening. I'll give it one pound for it. I'm going to give it to you for a very cheap price, just for now. How much profit are you making on the 20p? I think it's about five p profit for every pen. I'd want two for that. <laughs> two for that. What about one and a half? One and a half. You're going to sell me half a rubber band. Half a rubber band can do a lot of things. You can make a bracelet with it and then tie it around. My greatest achievement is that. Recently, I've joined the Youth Council. Um, my greatest achievement has been so far my product design coursework, which I've done for my GCSE. One of the greatest achievements that I've had so far is getting into an Islamic school. 
because prior to that I didn't have much knowledge on Islam. I think my greatest achievement uh, in life was be, uh, being able to say I started off um, slow, so um, maybe starting off uh, with my maths, you know, I was in set four and moved all the way to, up to set one. If you were stuck on a desert island, yes. what three things would you want to take with you? I want to take water. Okay. I would take a scarf. Why? It's to protect myself from the heat device with me, like a mobile phone or something. Uh, what for? Um, so if I get lost, I can signal and for a map as well. Like technology nowadays, you can do anything in one go. Why a knife? A knife could um, come into use very often. So um, say if you have a cactus, you know, you, you won't be able to rip it apart with your hands because there's uh, spines on it. And um, supply of food and drink and also something that will entertain me could be anything like a ball or a... In a few words, describe what skills you would bring to 3G Boss. Um, I think uh, one of the perfect words that um, I would think about would be ambition. Always motivate my group to work well, even if we lose or anything, I always may I tell them that don't worry, we can do it next time better or we will learn something. Well, I'm good with computers. Um, I can write quickly. I can think quickly on the top of my head. Um, I think um, leadership skill would be one of them because we're going to be on a lot of tasks. So I'll be willing to be a leader in some of them, the stuff that I'm good at. Okay. It works fantastically. It's the most brilliant, breathtaking and unbelievable pen you will ever see. You can get it for 50p or you can get it in a large box. I can sell you this one for 40p. It's basically got all the ink needed. When you go to the shop, they, they have basically the same amount. What's your name? Howard. Um, could you, how do you spell that? H-O-W-A-R-D. Uh, could you write that down? I'm not a, as good as a listener. Uh, I can't write it down at the moment because I don't have a pen. Well, why don't you buy this pen off me? It's very good because the ink lasts very well and it's black. And black is the colour that you, put, you need mostly. For example, like something formal like your passport registration, you need to do a black colour ink. The interviews, it's like, it's the nice feeling of getting interviewed and like how it's like it gives you an impression of how a real life job interview would be. Fire alarm went off in this building right now. What would you do? Uh, look around the room, see if anyone's there. Tell them about you know where to go. Where, where, how would you know where to go? Look to the fire exit signs and go straight to the door. Boxes and boxes and boxes of them. What are you going to do with it? Uh, either find someone to drive the truck or to unload the turnips so that I can take them to a place where they'd be of more use. We're here in Canary Wharf, the home and workstation for our contestants in the next 10 weeks. At the moment, our judges are interviewing the contestants, giving them a very hard interview, and let's go and see how it's going. If I gave you one million pounds right now, of actual cash, what would you do with it? Probably lean for not taking it because it's, I didn't earn it. I didn't do anything to get, get the money. If I gave you a million pounds, you'd say no? Yeah, because it's not Are you sure you want to be in business? It's not earned. It's not earned, but why, why would that worry you? You didn't do anything to get the money. It's no hard work put into it. You're the first person that'd say no. Some people say they give it away, and give it to charity, but you're like, no, I'm not going to take it. You wouldn't take a million pounds if I gave it to you? No, it's not earned. Okay, remind me to next time if somebody does give you a million pounds, then take it and give it to me um, because I'll have it if you don't want it. Let's say um, I dropped you uh, in the middle of the uh, rainforest in South America. If I put you in the South American rainforest in the Amazon jungle, um, what three things would you want me to give you to, to go to the jungle? Give me a helicopter. So I could just escape. My dream job would be a job where I'd be able to work in collaboration with other people. Tell me about the biggest mistake you've ever made in school. It was probably last year in my humanities exam. I shouldn't have made that mistake. It was, uh, and the, the teacher wrote the time, uh, the end time on the board, and it was 2.30. Yeah. I misread it, and I thought it was 2.45. Okay. So at the beginning, I took my time. Okay. And right in the end, when the teacher said 10 minutes left, I looked up to the board and double-checked and it was too fake. <laughs> okay. So 
our contestants are currently going through very intriguing interviews by our judges. So let's see what has it going. Yeah, so they're going through very, very tough interviews. And it's from this they actually make it onto the main show. So let's leave them to do it.